Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to be here on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen speaking people and the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. The significant weather that we have seen continues to create challenges for Trans Mountain and the transport of fuel through the pipeline. After meeting with Cabinet this morning, I'm announcing today that we're extending the temporary order to limit fuel for non essential vehicles until December 14th, 2021. This order applies in the lower mainland to Hope region, Sea to Sky region, the Sunshine Coast, Gulf Islands, and Vancouver Island. The fuel conservation measures are working, and I want to thank British Columbians for their patience, but we need to stay the course for another two weeks until we have the Trans Mountain Pipeline back online. We need to ensure our supply chains and emergency services have the fuel that they need to function. Minister Ralston is with us today and will provide more details shortly. Given the extension of the fuel order and the continued threats of storms and flooding, we are also extending the provincial state of emergency through to the end of day on December 14th. Extending the state of emergency will support the ongoing response and recovery from the widespread damage already caused by flooding while positioning us to take all necessary steps in the days ahead. In addition, all current orders to related to non-essential travel on Highways 3, Highway 7, and Highway 99 remain in place. Many people across the province have been affected in some way by these storms, and we are still in a volatile and dynamic situation. While we continue to repair heavily damaged infrastructure, including highways and railways, and ensure the movement of essential goods and services to people in need, we need to continue to help farmers and others in the agricultural sector with cleanup and recovery, and support affected families, businesses, and communities. We must, we must remember there are sti still big challenges ahead of us. In the coming week, I urge British Columbians to place close attention to weather forecasts and road closures. In addition to the areas of concern in southwestern BC, we're also putting in place assets for the potential of flooding in the central coast especially the Bella Coola Valley. For all British Columbians, please check forecasts and warnings from Environment Canada regularly this week and listen to your local governments and authorities, especially if evacuation alerts or evacuation orders are issued. Anyone under an evacuation order should leave the area immediately. Please check on vulnerable neighbors who may need assistance. And if you're unable to evacuate on your own, Call 911 and report your location immediately. I know Mayor Braun in Abbotsford has continued to call for anyone remaining in Sumas Prairie to evacuate immediately, and I need to reiterate the risk to lives there as another storm threatens to bring more heavy rain. Yesterday, the Nooksack River in Washington State breached its banks, putting further strain on the Sumas River and Prairie. These storms have impacted thousands of people and continue to cause devastation and loss. Thousands remain away from their homes and communities continue to grapple with extensive damage. This recovery will take time. And yet we are seeing firsthand the strength and resilience of the people of this province and the efforts in communities to protect and support one another. I want to thank British Columbians for doing their part by avoiding non-essential travel, conserving fuel and staying safe so that essential vehicles can continue to operate. The fuel conservation measures are working. They are temporary. And we will drop these measures as soon as we are able to. I also want to assure British Columbians that fuel is coming in by barge and by rail. But for now, until the pipeline supply is back up and running, we need to stay the course. With the holidays approaching, I understand that people have concerns about being able to travel to see family and friends. We understand that people want to be able to make travel plans, and we are working to make good progress in repairing travel corridors in the days and weeks. Again, at this time, the priority for fuel needs to be given to commercial and essential vehicles to reconnect communities that have been cut off and to deliver goods and services that we all depend on. I want to thank all of those working around the clock to ensure that we can lift these restrictions as soon as possible. I want to thank the emergency managers, road crews, the more than 500 Canadian Armed Forces members, First Nations and local leaders, volunteers, RCMP, and countless efforts for your efforts. 
all of us working together have been getting us through this terrible time. And I know but by all of us working together, we will get through this. So with that, I want to turn this update over to my colleague, Minister Ralston. Thank you. Minister Ralston. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Farnworth. I am joining you today from the territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. I am here to provide an update on the fuel supply in the southwest region of British Columbia. Government staff have been working hard with their federal counterparts at Transport Canada and Natural Resources Canada through the Federal Provincial Supply Chain Recovery Working Group, as well as fuel suppliers, retailers and the Canadian Fuels Association to ensure that we have enough fuel supply to get us through this critical time. Thanks to everyone's fuel conservation efforts, we have been able to maintain a steady fuel supply to the region. Retailers acted quickly to manage the fuel restriction order. In some cases, retailers have set an automatic cutoff related to the price at the pump consistent with 30 litres or less of gas. We've also seen British Columbians act calmly and rationally at the pumps, taking only what they need when they need it. I want to thank the fuel suppliers, the retailers, the hardworking gas station attendants and everyone who continues to do their part to follow this order. Fuel has made its way into the lower mainland from Alberta through the railways. We also know that some barges have arrived to offload fuel from the United States. This has provided a supply of fuel to compensate for the product that would usually come from the Trans Mountain Pipeline while the company works towards restarting the line. We know that a large weather system is expected to hit in the days ahead. What we don't know is what impact that will have on our railways, our roads and the pipeline infrastructure in the province. Consequently, as you've heard from Minister Farnworth, we have extended the fuel restriction order. We ask that everyone continue to follow the extended order until Tuesday, December the 14th. This will ensure that we can continue to prioritize essential vehicles as we endure and recover from these ongoing significant weather events. I can tell you that if British Columbians abide by the fuel orders of 30 litres for non-essential vehicles per trip to the gas station, we will continue to have a stable supply of fuel in our province until our traditional supply routes are able to restart. So if you don't have to be on the road, don't drive. If you only need a quarter tank of gas, leave the rest for the person behind you. And if you can take public transit or work from home, please do so. The Trans Mountain Pipeline provides the majority of transportation fuels for the Lower Mainland and Vancouver Island. The pipeline has been down since November the 14th, 2021, although crews are working around the clock to restart the line in a phased approach. The incoming weather system is something that Trans Mountain is watching closely as well. Our rail system is the obvious backstop for transporting crude and refined fuel from Alberta into British Columbia. As I've said, CP Rail has moved refined products such as gasoline and diesel into southwestern British Columbia in the last week. That, along with the fuel barges from the United States, has helped to replenish the supply of fuel in the lower mainland and surrounding regions. As I said earlier, Ministry staff have worked closely with our federal partners as well as industry to ensure a steady supply of fuel to retail locations in southwest British Columbia. There are six major fuel distributors in British Columbia, five of which supply the Lower Mainland and Vancouver Island. All of the fuel distributors operate with contingency plans in the event that there is a fluctuation in their traditional fuel supply. They have invoked their contingency plans and have sourced fuel from other sources. There is one refinery in southern British Columbia, the Parkland Refinery in Burnaby. Last Monday, Parkland announced that they were pausing their refining processes as they no longer had access to crude oil required to develop refined fuels such as gasoline and diesel. The refinery is now in a ready mode, awaiting a stable supply of crude oil once the Trans Mountain Pipeline is operational again. Parkland is now focused on offloading and distributing refined fuel that they are sourcing from elsewhere to their retail locations. Thank you. 
Thank you, Minister Ralston. I will now ask Minister Fleming to say a few words. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you, uh, Minister Ralston, Minister Farnworth. Um, I'd like to uh, begin with a huge and heartfelt thanks to all the crews that were out preserving Highway 1 last night from the uh, flood risk uh, in Abbotsford, uh, Sumas. Um, it went through the night. Um, the effort was incredible to protect uh, Highway 1 through the Fraser Valley. Uh, people have seen the images today of uh, military, police, firefighters and volunteers. I would like to give a shout out to the Shaw Hommel First Nation who also brought people and equipment uh, to throw into the effort and all of these individuals and organizations spent hours uh, assembling tiger dams and it was nothing short of astounding to see that and it was a real race against time and we thank them for their efforts. Our highway network uh, continues to be challenged by the extreme weather we're experiencing but we are meeting that challenge and it's because of the incredible efforts of first responders, maintenance contractors and many many people in the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure and Emergency Management BC uh, that we are able to do this. <clears throat> I want to recap the situation on our highways. Uh, you'll recall that we proactively uh, closed uh, previously affected highways from the uh, November 14th storm events. Uh, we did that uh, over the weekend as a precaution. While there doesn't appear to be significant damage, uh, many of the highways that we did preemptively closed experienced flooding and some had debris and trees uh, down on those routes. In terms of a status update of current conditions, uh, I will provide that now, but please bear in mind that this situation is constantly evolving and for the latest information, I would urge uh, those who are uh, listening to this to refer to Drive BC always. Last evening, we did in fact have to close Highway 1 uh, to build those uh, dams and protect it from flooding. Uh, we did that uh, ahead of uh, potential flooding, that stretch of highway. Uh, remains closed in an area of concern. Um, some good news uh, from uh, overnight uh, with floodwaters having receded uh, in certain parts of the storm affected uh, uh, highway system we are able to uh, reopen Highway 3 and I believe that was of, as of 10 or 20 minutes ago. So that Highway 3 connection between Hope and Princeton uh, has been reopened and with Highway 7 also remaining open, this provides uh, a vital corridor for the movement of essential goods. So starting in Mission, this route out to Princeton continues to fall under the travel orders. It is prioritized for commercial vehicles. We've also just reopened Highway 99 between Pemberton and Lillooet and Highway 1 in the Fraser Canyon from Hope to Boothroyd uh, on the other side of Boston Bar. Uh, that has also reopened. Highway 1 east of Chilliwack between Popcom and Hope, which was also pre proactively uh, closed on Saturday, uh, remains closed at this time. We are constantly uh, assessing the status of closed highways. When we get engineers in there to make a safety determination, uh, when it is safe to travel again, we will reopen uh, those highways. Again, the situation is very dynamic and I would encourage uh, everyone to follow Drive BC for the latest information. With regards to uh, supply chain, despite the challenges that we're experiencing on our highways, our broader supply chain is showing incredible resilience. Goods are still moving in British Columbia. Freight trains are currently traveling in both directions on CP tracks. CP continues to actively inspect its tracks and train movement may hold uh, when required for maintenance uh, before it resumes again. Uh, CN uh, Rail operated a total of seven westbound trains on Saturday and Sunday before the rain events forced it to stop. Uh, CN has been able to work with customers to divert some rail traffic to the port of Prince Rupert where the rail line continues to have capacity and remains fluid. Uh, a reminder for motorists, please be extra vigilant on the roads where there are level crossings, uh, where uh, you are close to the railway. Uh, proceed only when it's safe to, to do so, look, uh, look both ways and be mindful uh, of rail traffic. With more heavy uh, rains forecast, we'll continue to monitor all of our highways in the region. We have crews uh, stationed now in the Balakula Valley, uh, ready to respond as required because the weather event is heading in that direction and we anticipate significant rainfall there. Um, again, with all of the people involved in this effort uh, to uh, protect our highways, to protect uh, the traveling public, I want to again extend my appreciation and sincere, sincere respect 
for the professionalism and hard work of all the crews out there uh, on our roads. Safety is our top priority as a government, as a ministry, and if required, we will preemptively close highways again. If you need to be driving, I urge you to check Drive BC for the very latest updates on road conditions. But unless it is absolutely necessary, I would encourage you to stay off the roads through this next storm event. And with that, I would like to now introduce Armel Castellan from Environment Canada. Please go ahead, Armel. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Armel Castellan, Warning Preparedness Meteorologist, and I have an update for you on the third of three storms. But before I do that, I wanted to say that the second storm that occurred over the weekend uh, was obviously impactful and delivered a fair amount of rain that uh, affected many regions along our coast. Uh, places like Abbotsford saw 104 millimeters of rain, Agassiz 100, Hope was up at 127, and we had uh, a widespread amount on the west side of Vancouver Island, all the way through uh, to the north and central coasts. Um, currently, we are on a 24-hour break. We have showers interluding for the day uh, into this evening. Uh, the system that we are tracking, it is, again, an atmospheric river. It's coming in from the subtropical origins near the Philippines. It's been traveling 8,000, 9,000 kilometers over the last few days, and it will deliver a relatively strong punch similar to what we saw this weekend. So we are talking about 50 to 100 millimeters on the south coast for the lower mainland, Sunshine Coast, Howe Sound, and the Fraser Valley. Uh, 50 millimeters is the estimate closer to the border region. As you get into those North Shore Mountains, of course, that those values will increase. Same uh, for Hope, we're talking about 60 to 90 millimeters. Um, for for Abbotsford, we're talking about 40 to 70. We also increase that uh, amount into the coastal mountains near the Coquihalla summit uh, towards uh, the, the height of land uh, in that 40 to 70 millimeters as well. All this to say, there is a fair amount of rain on snow. The freezing levels are going to be going up to 2,500 meters or 3,000 meters which is essentially above mountaintop height. So the snow that does remain that is on the brink of melting because it's really, really close to zero degrees uh, could certainly add to the total. So it's not just a rain event. It's not just a snow melting event. It's also a successive storm event. So even if the third storm is not as bad as it could have been uh, in the modeling leading up to today, it will be problematic because they are coming so close back to back with the runoff and the saturated soil. Um, we, we also are dealing with weather all across the province. Places on the north coast are going to see up to 40 centimeters of, of snow, followed by rain and perhaps even freezing rain and then rain. So places in Terrace, Stewart uh, are definitely uh, dealing with a lot of winter storm warning weather. Um, and we have special weather statements out in the interior for Blue River, Golden, um, Shoe Swap area that are going to see a transition from uh, freezing levels that are low to high and with a, a good amount of rain as well. So the whole province is bracing for this type of weather. The south coast is not immune to it. The central coast will be the peak for this event. So places from Bella Coola, Bella Bella, Wicano, uh, Kinkam Inlet and the northwest end of Vancouver Island from Tofino North are susceptible to seeing the largest amount up to 200 millimeters uh, through till Wednesday evening. The last point I'll make is about wind. Um, we will likely see some southeasterly winds, likely not wind warning criteria, but considering the vulnerabilities right now, uh, 40 gusting to 60 kilometers an hour from the southeast on Tuesday and into Wednesday uh, could be problematic. Uh, lastly, with the outlook, we do have a break in the weather for Thursday and Friday. Uh, we follow that up with a weaker system, not an atmospheric river, uh, on Saturday. And the details on, the, on those events as they come closer to 
uh, happening will be emerging on our on our forecasts, and we just urge everybody to stay vigilant, follow the forecast and the warnings associated uh, to your region. Thank you very much. Our last speaker today is David Campbell. Please go ahead, David. Thank you. And I'll provide an update on current river conditions and the outlook in the coming days. Uh, significant rainfall from the weekend's atmospheric river uh, has uh, exacerbated river levels and flood conditions across southwest British Columbia. Flooding and challenging conditions have been reported throughout the Fraser Valley, the Fraser Canyon, and into the interior watersheds. Uh, flood warnings were issued Sunday and remain in effect for the Coquihalla, uh, Coldwater, Tulamine, and Sumas areas. Uh, we've got flood watches uh, remaining in effect for southern Vancouver Island, um, Howe Sound, Metro Vancouver, the Lower Mainland, and the Fraser Valley. And we issued two new flood watches this morning for areas including the central coast and northern Vancouver Island in recognition of the, the risks associated uh, of severe flooding potential over the next three days with this next atmospheric river system. The Nooksack River reached flood stage on Saturday, Sunday afternoon and began spilling floodwaters into the Canadian side into the, the Sumas River watershed. We've seen the Nooksack River receding now through, through this morning and, and is dropped below that flood stage, but the act of spilling uh, on Monday morning of the, the settling of that floodwater is expected to continue through the day uh, in the Sumas River side uh, today. And, it's expected that that could prove, provide additional challenges throughout the day. And this may be exacerbated by the continued rainfall and an additional overspill risks that we may see over the coming uh, three days. In terms of outlook, uh, we've seen the peak from river levels from, from the storm over the last two days is now uh, starting to see receding in, in rivers. And we're going to see a brief reprieve uh, today in, in most of those systems with this lull. So we move to the upcoming days. The next uh, atmospheric river event is expected to bring significant rainfall on Wednesday, uh, or sorry, through Wednesday, um, with risks for severe flooding uh, on the coastal uh, areas of the central coast, uh, and as well as Vancouver Island. And given on, uh, ongoing vulnerabilities, we can also uh, expect to see persistence or additional flood risks uh, persisting through the south coast. Uh, and into the south interior uh, through this week as well. 